And welcome back to the show. Children's Aid is one of America's oldest and largest children's not-for-profits. The organization helps children in poverty to succeed and thrive by providing comprehensive supports to children and their families in targeted high-needs New York City neighborhoods. For more than 160 years, Children's Aid has been committed to ensuring there are no boundaries to the aspirations of young people, no limits to their potential, and that they're leading a comprehensive counterattack on the obstacles that threaten kids' achievement in school and life. And joining us now to share a little bit more about Children's Aid is the Deputy Director for Bronx Community Schools at Children's Aid, Ron Cope. And uh, Ron, good to have you. Uh, thanks for having me. I really, really appreciate the time. Segment's a little personal. I remember playing basketball, Children's Aid in Harlem. I, that was one of the places where I had grown up and found Children's Aid, and I first became acquainted. But I know there's a long history of great work that Children's Aid does. Um, talk to us about it. Well, I think the biggest thing that we understand is that we are here to support any needs and also identifying strengths that young people have um, across the areas that we focus on in New York City. So we are in Central Harlem, East Harlem, Staten Island, um, the Bronx is where I'm located in the work that I'm doing, Washington Heights as well. Um, so we, we want to be there for children and families. And there's no better time to be a support to families and children today um, in these communities. Um, children's Aid provides youth programming, uh, we focus on core areas, core focus areas where we look at children and we do academics, social emotional learning, health and nutrition, and then we focus on family and community. So when we go into a community, we really put our foot down and really put a stamp on what we're trying to do in communities to ensure that we can remove any barriers from children and families' lives so that they can be successful and thrive. Let's talk about youth for a moment because that is our future and that's also our present. As we talk about youth programs, I know you have a variety of youth programs, but talk about the youth of today and some of the work that you guys are doing and trying to build them for a brighter tomorrow. Yeah, I think um, the, the strategy that I am in charge of in the South Bronx is community schools and what we do with the initiative and partnership with DOE in New York City. But Children's Aid has been a leader in community schools since 1992. Um, what we see as the community school is a strategy to try to pull resources in the school community and make it a hub in the community so that we can address the needs that children and family have right in the school community where we know we have a captive audience, where people are, um, and really, really put all of our resources in the school. So parents don't have to go around. It's a one-stop shop where people can get everything. So in our schools in, in the South Bronx, we have after-school programming, we have adult education, we have mental health services, um, we have success mentors that work every day to ensure that students are coming to school and arrive at school um, safely, um, meet them at the front door. Uh, we also have um, support for academic support, but also to look at what students' interests are. Do they love the arts? Do they love STEM? Do they love different things that they have interest in that we can bring into the school community um, as well? And then supporting the families, identifying needs that families have. Is it workforce development? Is it that adult education, GED, or ESL courses? Um, is it food assistance? Um, during this time, it has been specific need about food insecurity in the Bronx. Um, how do we make sure that all of those things are under the school community where we can build positive relationships with families around their children and ensure that we can give them whatever they need. So that has been really essential for us. Um, was It was true in 1992 and it's true today in 2021. Yeah. And I know that when you talk about families and needs, in this time of COVID, there's a lot. There's social, emotional learning that goes on. People are forced to learn virtually. And there's that social, emotional learning component. Uh, I know that you guys do great work in that area as well. Share with us a little bit about the social, emotional learning that goes on. I think, I think it's important to look at this in the, in the multiple ways, but to focus on social, emotional learning. One of the things that we had done that was really, really, when the pandemic hit, one of the things that we did a strategy was to build like needs assessments throughout. And as you're saying, social emotional needs really came up as a as a need for our for our children and our families, right? So what we did was we did needs assessments 
found out what, what families needed and then pulled our resources together. So around social emotional learning, we have, um, or social emotional needs, we have mental health clinicians in our schools. We have community health clinic here in the South Bronx where we can have parents go there if they have needs, where they need counseling, family counseling. Uh, we do have the counselors in the school if they need direct need in the school where we can give them the services in the school community. Um, and then also we have strategic partnerships in the Bronx where we are able to um, work with other organizations if there are crises, if there are other things that we, that we need that are outside because strategic partnerships are essential in and understanding that your organization can't do everything, but building strategic partnerships to serve the needs of all families. We also have a preventive care program under Children's AIDS banner, as well as also um, a CIFTIS program that does clinical support to families' homes, does home visits for families. So we made sure that we did needs assessment. Then we, with needs like social and emotional needs, we were able to pull all our resources with different departments, different organizations, and all the resources that we have in our community schools to ensure that we can address all the needs of children and families. When we look at what's going on right now with children and families, we know the big challenge right now amidst COVID is food, food insecurity, health and nutrition. How are you tackling the issue of health and nutrition uh, with your organization? That, that is a great question. Uh, we built some, when I say tremendous strategic partnerships, um, around food insecurity and food assistance. Um, I think this has been tremendous for us. So we have a longstanding partnership with Food Corps where there's AmeriCorps members that work in three of our schools in the South Bronx. Um, they directly do health and nutrition, food activities with our students, gardening with our students in the school community. Um, we also partner with a number of organizations, West Side Campaign Against Hunger um, that's in Manhattan, but they pr provided food boxes for our families in the Bronx, produce boxes for our families in the Bronx. Um, we also partner with uh, Rethink Foods, which is a non New York-based um, nonprofit organization that provides warm meals. They partner with actual restaurants and make warm meals, and then we bring them to our schools and distribute them to families, um, and that has been amazing. We do about 600 meals a week in the, in the South Bronx um, in two mm. of our school locations, which is awesome. Uh, we have given out so much food. We're, we're doing a thousand meals a week uh, across the agency and 2000 meals starting next week. So we understand that that's important. We have partnered with the Food Bank of New York City. We have pa a pantry in the Whitney Young Jr. campus where I am right now. And then we're opening a new location at the Charles Drew campus um, on 3rd Avenue, 169th and 3rd Avenue. So the Food Bank of New York City has been a tremendous partner with us opening campus pantries so that we could address the needs in our school communities as well. Uh, we've worked with the Food Bank on a number of distributions as well. So these partnerships that have been de um, developed by our Food and Nutrition di um, Division and Health and Wellness Division of Children's Aid and partnering with our community schools and with the community has been tremendous. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to do a lot of this without them um, and the organizations that we've partnered with. Yeah. And so how has COVID actually impacted the work that you do? Um, it has impacted it significantly. Um, parents are about community schools, right? Um, is about relationships. It's about building those positive relationships with families so that they feel safe. They feel that they can trust the people that they're working directly with. And we're able to give them the services in a way. And a lot of this is in a safe space in the school community. And now that parents feel disconnected, right? And there was a tremendous shift in connectivity, right? We, we talk about connectivity a lot, um, but it was a, a, a very big shift to that one-on-one -on -one personable um, type of experience that families were used to experiencing to now having to use the phone and Zoom and Google Classroom. Um, that had changed the dynamic for a while and we had to get acclimated to that. We had to help our parents get acclimated to that experience so that we could be able to serve them appropriately during this time. Um, and even our children, um, it was a huge shift. Our schools had to get adjusted. Teachers had to get adjusted to this experience. Um, but we have done a fantastic job in addressing that connectivity is a problem for our children um, and our families and try to ensure that they have the connectivity so that we can do it and be successful in this community. And to be honest, uh, this may be a new look. This may be our new normal. So we need right. to 
get good at it, right? And be and, and be able to produce um, in, in a virtual environment and be able to do it in a hybrid way, right? In person and in a remote way and virtual way um, and, and have success in it in serving children and families. Yeah. Ron Cole, we gotta leave it there, but thank you so much for the great work that you're doing with Children's Aid Society. Um, certainly a benefit to our community. As I said, I've uh, been familiar, grew up with it, and uh, now to be able to report on it and bring it to other people, a great joy. Thanks for being with us, brother. We appreciate you, man. Thanks for the time. Um, Children's Aid can definitely, childrensaid.org, childrensaidnyc.org. Please have people log on. We, we appreciate yeah. it. Well, he already said it, but I'm going to say it again. If you want more information, do visit their website, childrensaidnyc.org. And of course, uh, you can follow them on social media at Children's Aid NYC. Special thanks to Ron. We'll be back with more coming up right after this. Thanks so much.